Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All, and in this video we're going to be having a look at some of the tips and tricks provided by you guys. So one of the most fantastic things about doing this channel has been having some conversations with people on YouTube and in other places like Instagram Messenger where you've been giving me some hints and tips of things that I haven't talked about in the videos. And just in case people don't look at the comment section, I just wanted to share a few of the ones that I thought, wow, and been totally blown away by. So just to be clear, I didn't know about these before they were mentioned by people in the comments section. So I just wanted to say a thanks to all of you. And so this video doesn't go too long, I've just picked the top three that I thought were really worth sharing. So the first one, and I'm just gonna shift an A and bring in a quad sphere to show this and just S to scale this down, was commented by Ve Preekser, and I apologize if I've got that said incorrectly. And this was mentioned in the navigation tricks video that I did. Now I'm just gonna move this up and then at this point, I'm gonna start using this tip that was given. So in the video, I was mentioning how that you can use Alt and the middle mouse button to flick yourself around to different viewpoints really, really quickly, and how useful I thought that was. Now, they mentioned another use of the middle mouse button, which I've never heard about, and that is for moving objects around. So if you press G to grab the object and move it around, normally if you want to lock it to an axis, for example, the X axis, I would always press X and then you've got it locked to the x-axis, or z, and then it's locked to the z-axis. But apparently, once you've pressed G, you can just click and hold down the middle mouse button, and you'll see that you get this white line that's coming off of the original point of the object. And when that white line goes closest to one of the axes line, for example, here I'm on the blue z-axis, then it goes to the green y-axis, then to the red x-axis, it will lock to that axis. So you can move that to whatever axis you want it to be and then let go of the middle mouse button and then you've now got this locked to that axis. For example, let's go here and you can just change this part way through. Actually, I want to go on the Z axis. No, I don't want to be on the Y axis. I mean, this is gonna save so much time. I now don't have to move my hand across the keyboard to find the Y key. And what's even more important is I don't have to look up at the gimbal in the top right hand corner to have a look which axis I want to go on if I'm in a weird view or angle and if I can't see the axis lines that are in the zero zero point. So absolutely amazing tip. I mean, that's blown me away. Now what's even more awesome about this trick is it also works with scaling. So if I press S and then the middle mouse button, I can just scale on the Z axis and then lock to that or change it to being scaling on the X axis. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic for saving some time. And I can't believe I haven't seen this mentioned in more videos. So that's the first tip. Thank you, Vey. That is absolutely amazing. So the next tip was also in the navigation tricks video, and this one comes from Cat99. And when I was talking about the different viewport tricks, one thing that I didn't mention, and I'm gonna be perfectly clear, didn't know about this, was that if you press the Control, Alt, and Q key, you get up this quad view, which fantastically shows you the view on the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis simultaneously while you've also got your viewport here that you can move around. So it gives you a much more holistic view of what you're doing and changing. And you can bring your mouse to whatever window, press G, and then you're gonna lock it to, in this instance, just moving around without moving around on the Y axis, because I was looking on the Y. And you can see what this is doing in the other windows. And then all you need to do is Control Alt Q to get out of it. Really, really useful for moving things around and getting a really whole view of what you're doing. So thanks, Cat. That's really cool. And then the final of these tips comes from Arjax. And this is from when I was looking at the Boolean operations. So what I was saying in the video is that if you want to Boolean things in an automatically destructive way, you can do that. So normally if I press there and then shift click the other object and control and minus, this will do a difference Boolean, but it hasn't been activated yet. And in the video I said, well, if you've got hard ops, you can press control and tab and turn that to be destructive. Now, hard ops is paid for, and don't get me wrong, I think it's amazing. But, Arjax pointed out that you do not need to have this paid for add-on to be able to do this in a destructive way. So if I select this object and Shift and D just to demonstrate what I mean, if I've activated ball tool, so edit, preferences, and then type in ball, and make sure that is ticked. And once that's done, I can select the object that I either want to Boolean to or away from the object, 
shift click the object that I want it to be boolean to or from and click control and minus. Oh, I will say this has just gone back to wireframe. That's because I've activated and deactivated ball tools. If you go to edit preferences and then you click this display as wireframe, I find this has a much nicer result. So just to show what that does, control and minus, and then you get the wireframe of the object. I find that much, much nicer. I'm also going to get rid of the face orientation just so this looks a bit cleaner until we apply it. Now that is control and then minus. Now what you can also do is if you click the object and then shift click the object you want to cut from and you press control shift and minus, you will notice that that has not created a modifier there. It has automatically done it. Now there is a slight danger that I've only just realized and I didn't know this happened. I've only just been playing around with this. And that is if I do control and minus, you'll notice here we've got that modifier so I can still move this around. If we want to do this one destructively, and then I shift click here, if I press control shift and minus, it will do this destructively, but it also turns all of your other modifiers destructive. So now this can't be moved around. So just something to be aware of there. Now, the other way you can do this is say you've got this object and you shift click here. What you can do is press control shift and B and that will get up the ball tool menu and that allows you to do these two options as well you can use the auto boolean so difference union intersect or slice so for example I might want to do a difference and that will automatically apply it you've not had to go over here and apply things whereas if you control shift and B and go to the brush booleans and go difference that is going to create that over here as a modifier so it's not automatically applied so there's definitely some bits to play around with there to speed up your workflow. So Vey, Cat99 and Arjax, thank you so much. I hope you don't mind me bringing that to everyone else's attention. I think they're great tricks and I just wanted to make sure more people were aware of them. So thank you for watching and if you've got any tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please do put them in the comments section. As always, if there's something useful, I'll give full credit. And I think everyone really appreciates everyone's willingness to share with the community. It's honestly such a positive of the Blender and 3D design groups I've been in. People are always so willing to share. And again, thank you all. Have a great day, guys.